Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at South Falls. Today we have an interesting case, which is a uh, boxer cross that has a history of a really nasty, large, invasive mass on the ventral abdomen. So this is the mass here, fairly irregular. Back legs are here. This is ventral midline. And uh, biopsy was done, which revealed a grade one soft tissue sarcoma, which is great news for the dog because it's unlikely to metastasize. Now, normally we would have to excise all of this skin, um, but on this dog, on the CT scan, um, the skin is very isolated from the mass, except for in a few areas here where the biopsy was performed. And so we're going to preserve the majority of the skin. Um, uh, except for the areas where the biopsy was previ previously performed. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Um, so I may have to put in a polypropylene mesh uh, to replace the abdominal wall. Um, and we'll decide that. Uh, as the surgery proceeds, and I'm just being really careful to be superficial with my skin incision so that I don't cut into tumor. Again, for those of you that are joining us a little bit later, this is a middle-aged boxer cross that has a history of this really large, rapidly growing mass on the ventral abdomen that was biopsied to be a soft tissue sarcoma, uh, grade one, which is good news. Um, the scan of the lungs showed no evidence of metastasis. And the nice thing about this one is that the CT scan showed that the mass, the skin was spared and is separated by a layer of fat around the tumor, which means that we can actually preserve skin. Now, in practice, unless you've got a CT scan, um, or you can very easily palpate the skin being completely movable over the tumor. You have to be really careful about preserving or uh, uh, preserving skin during your excision. And if you guys could let me know where you're watching from. Um, can I get an extra? Uh, lap sponge for you to retract. Just retract on the skin there. So I'm just being very careful to make sure that I don't cut into the tumor with my skin incision. Now again, the fact that this is a grade one tumor means that we are more able to preserve the skin. Um, now I'm just getting into the caudal superficial epigastric vessel right there. Nearly got Mel. A little bit of spatter. Take a minute, you're giving some more propofol. Hi, Oregon, while we're waiting for a little bit more propofol to be given, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Can I increase the CRI? Yes. Yeah, we've got her on a fentanyl CRI, but we may just have to increase it a little bit. You can imagine that this is a big deal as far as the surgery and discomfort and stuff during the procedure, so. And as always, we're battling hypotension versus uh, depth of anesthetic. It's always a good idea to try to ligate your vessels before you cut them instead of after you cut them. 
just to decrease our blood loss and compromise visibility. The CT scan on this case is pretty dramatic. Can I get Cordy turned up to 40, please? So you can see that the mass is actually, you can see the rectus uh, fascia over the mass there. So that's why um, the skin could be preserved because the mass is actually of the muscle rather than subcutaneously. And when you look at the CT scan, you can see that there, that, that muscle actually extends into the abdomen. I mean, sorry, tumor extends into the abdomen. going back and palpating the mass here. Can I um, get some Sen retractors, please? A couple of pairs. Mm -hmm. So I can palpate mass all the way out to there, all the way out to here. The external abdominal oblique muscle there, or is that rectus muscle? Rectus muscle. These are my, some of my favorite surgeries. You have to be a little bit more technical how you remove the mass, and considering things like reconstruction and Sorry? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So, again, being really careful not to cut too deeply here so that we don't get into tumor. If we cut into tumor at all here, uh, kind of the whole incision is contaminated. So it really is a, a lose big situation if that happens. So we have to be really careful. Uh, Send retractors. relax on that for a second so I can feel tumor all the way out to there. I 
and tumor out to there. Out to there. Let's get that other kelpie. Not sure if there are any questions that have been asked. I can't really see the screen very well. So I'm starting to go through the external abdominal fascia. Making sure that I am staying an adequate distance away from the tumor. And this dog did get an epidural, morphine and lignocaine. Right. Oh, Dave, do you want to come around this side? <clears throat> yeah. And there really isn't a lot of justification to really try to conserve abdominal wall because we're going to have to use, likely have to use a polypropylene mesh anyway. And it doesn't really matter within reason how big a mesh you use. So that's rectus muscle there that we're cutting through. And that's tumor there that I can see. of centimeters of abdominal wall beyond what I can palpate. And that contraction that we're seeing is not that the dog can feel it. Um, so Mel, what I'm going to have you do is grab onto the tumor there. Grab. So I'm going two centimeters in the muscle belly itself, and and I'm only taking skin margin where um, the skin's adherent to the tumor where the biopsy was. All right. So now we're to internal abdominal oblique. Tightly. And you won't shock your finger. You might burn your finger, but you won't shock it as long as there's no hole in the rubber. But if there is, you'll know it. <laughs> Have you two that are scrubbed in with me ever been shocked by cautery? No. It really hurts. <laughs> Right here. All right, go ahead and lift that up. Let's see how we're doing here. Hey, Ian. I have a special guest surgeon coming in. Ewan needs some more reconstruction, reconstruction cases for his case log, so he's going to scrub in with us in a minute. And we have Mel and Uday. Uday. It's 
like when you introduce your band. Well, my friends will be happy hearing that one. <laughs> Keep aiming these bleeders at Mel, but I can't seem to quite. Mm -hmm. Some retraction on the skin there. I'm actually surprised that that Ewan wouldn't have all of his reconstruction cases for his case log with the amount that we do here. I beg your pardon? Uh, so, uh, mostly just Ligashore is this device, which is a vessel sealing device. It's a bipolar device that seals vessels up to about seven millimeters in diameter and then cuts in between, although I would never trust it on a seven millimeter vessel. Um, I'm, I'm good for up to about probably four millimeters. I need to pop into the abdomen here and start working my way around. Okay. I think I'm down to peritoneum there anyway. doing cancer surgery, we're going in with the intent of a cure, and if we're not going to cure it, we need to either come up with a plan B, or send it to somebody who can cure it, or plan on adjuvant therapy, like radiation therapy or metronomic chemotherapy, or have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with the owners and say that we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be doing a curative intent surgery here. But going in and thinking, oh, we might cure it, uh, we'll do the best we can, is a surefire way to leave cancer behind. So the saying, <clears throat> go big or go home, applies. All right, so now I'm just going to cut through the body wall up here as well. Am I into the abdomen? I believe I am. It feels like guts in there. So that's peritoneum that we're going through here. That's intestine right there, and so we can palpate the extent of the mass in, inside the abdomen, and it's really big. Oh, look at that. But it's all lined by peritoneum for the most part, except for the part that's um, where the omentum is adhered. I 
sure that's falciform that's adhered to it. How cool is that? Hi, Piyush. Piyush is a vet from India who often comes and spends weeks at a time with us. I think he's been about three times from India. Hey, Ewan, how are you? This looks like a real new surgery. Yeah. Ewan just came in and said, this looks like a real you type of surgery. And he doesn't mean sheep. <laughs> so this is, this type of surgery is what gets me up in the morning. Not the simple transverse tip dip fractures? No. Although I don't mind them either. Really, the only thing I don't like is nebulous foil and limenesses. All right, so that's our deep margin there. That's peritoneum covering it, so that's great. So I'm very, very confident that we've gotten this whole thing out here. Okay, so now the next question is, are we going to use a polypropylene mesh? And I guess the other thing is, would it be beneficial to do a bupivacaine or, or a mepivacaine block here? And I think it probably would. Um, can we get some mepivacaine, please? Full dose. All right, so we'll just see if it looks like if this would easily close together. I'm happy to... Uh, could do... So UE just so when when uh, when you lose abdominal domain, which means that you um, don't have enough volume space in the abdomen to close, you can take the spleen out. So that would close under duress. So I think I'm just going to do a polypropylene mesh. I find that they're more comfortable when you do a mesh anyway. So. And there's not a, a real disadvantage to it. Theoretically, it could get infected or whatever, but. So I'm just going to get our omentum up here. And we'll start suturing our omentum down to the body wall so that the mesh, that the intestines aren't rubbing up against the, the mesh. Um, they can probably start on my next one, Felipe. Sorry? They can start on my next case. And I, uh, Felipe, please, um, will take some uh, 2 OPDS. Yep. And is that the full dose of mepivacaine? Full dose, like 2.7 units. What makes it? What makes it? Can we get that again? Sorry? Can we get another full dose of that? Another one? Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and start injecting the muscle here. And there's nothing that works as well for pain relief as a local anesthetic. Like a sodium channel blocker is better than any opiate. Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, we'll be able to close the skin primarily. All right, so just go ahead and start injecting skin. And I'll start suturing momentum. Can we get another 2 of PDS, please? So, okay, can you just... So I'm going to need your help to... Try to keep the intestines out of the way as I'm suturing the um, momentum. 
and then you and I uh, come around the other side as I'm doing this side. So I'm suturing omentum to close the defect first, and then we'll suture polypropylene mesh on top of that. And the purpose of the omentum is to keep the intestines from rubbing up against the mesh. So I'm basically suturing omentum to peritoneum. Try not to strangulate the intestine with our suture. That might be handy is to get a moistened lap sponge and then just make a little dam for the um, Intestines. So you, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm just suturing it to the internal line, so just to the peritoneum. The momentum is also going to help with um, healing bringing blood supply in. The other nice thing is if, heaven forbid, we have to remove that mesh, that omentum is going to create a really nice fibrous layer that, you know, if you waited a month, you could take the mesh out and still have protection of the abdominal contents from herniating out. Sides. Uh, Felipe, you let them know that we could go with the next case? Yes. Thank you. Now the next one is an interesting one that may or may not go to surgery. It's a little dog that we did an amyloid constrictor for a portosystemic shunt about eight months ago. The dog was doing really well clinically and then uh, had repeated bile acids done and the bile acids are through the roof. They were initially pretty close to normal after the surgery, but now they're very high again. So that means one of two things, well, one of several things. One, the um, shunt has recanalized, meaning that uh, a blood vessel has, has penetrated through the amyloid constrictor. Two, is that there's a new shunt that's formed. Three, or like a new um, single shunt that we didn't pick up beforehand. Three, that we've got multiple acquired shunts because the liver couldn't handle the uh, increased blood supply. And four, that we just have some primary liver failure. So I'm hoping that, that the shunt is just oh recanalized. What's that, Yui? I was hoping, I said, I'm hoping for column A. Yeah. How long after did they retest Can they recanalize it? Oh, yeah. How long after did they retest the bile acids? They tested it initially, like a, a couple of months after surgery, and it was good. It was not normal, but it was much lower. And then they just retested it again in um, June, so this month. Are you two there, Yui? Yep. Okay. So 
So you guys can see how we've made a really nice sling out of a menton. I'm very four proud minutes. of me, Charles. I just took a 400 gram liver tumor out of a four kilogram belt. Nice. So 10% body weight. Jenny Craig's got nothing on me. <laughs> All right. So can we get our polypropylene mesh, please? So really nice uh, mental sling. Uh, there's a question, something about histopathological results, especially in the clean margins. I'll have to go back and read that because I can't see it right now. Uh, that one should be fine. Yeah, the smaller one. Thank you. So this is our polypropylene mesh here. Let's start rounding that off a little bit. Can I get some more 2 PDS? So um, we're putting a momentum underneath the polypropylene mesh so that it's going to protect the intestines from rubbing up against this mesh because the mesh is somewhat abrasive if you look at it here. Uh, so there's a question about using uh, uh, benefits or, or prospect of using CO2 laser as opposed to electric cautery. Um, I am not a big laser proponent, not that I, I, I just have never found any benefit of it over um, a um, scalpel or cautery. Um, the theoretical benefits are less pain, um, more rapid healing, that kind of thing. But what I find is that um, in the in, uh, cases where I've used it, we have had re-bleeding um, where I thought that it was cauterized during the surgery and then it started bleeding again afterwards. So I, I tend not to use it. I mean, as you guys are aware, I love toys and if I could find an excuse <laughs> to use a laser, I would definitely buy one, but um, I have not found a benefit to it. Um, so do you want to start up at the top there? I'm going to grab some more 2 PDS, please. So now I'm just suturing the polypropylene mesh to the abdominal wall and I'm going to go just superficial to the omentum so that we am making sure that I'm getting abdominal musculature to make sure that number one everything that uh, everywhere that the intestines can touch polypropylene mesh that it's covered with omentum and number two there's no way there's no little pocket that that intestines can sneak out and herniate. And I don't know if you guys have heard my story about polypropylene mesh, but when I came to Australia, um, I tried to buy some polypropylene mesh because I used to use it with some frequency in America. And it was from um, one... Uh, one uh, human manufacturer, um, very well-known manufacturer, it was $900 a sheet this size. And so, which was much more expensive than what I used to pay when I was in the U.S. And so I found the company that makes the mesh for 
um, this medical company and asked them if I could buy a roll of it and process it myself. And they said, well, you have to be a distributor. Um, and I said, I am a distributor. <laughs> and so I suddenly mm -hmm. became a distributor and bought a roll for $2,000 that will make me an estimated 600 pieces of mesh. So basically, mesh costs me about $4 a sheet, um, which is cheaper than suture material. Yeah, Joel, you're down here. Yeah. You want to come down this body? Yep. This Just the outside there. Yeah. And if you can get your the line that the layer that you sutured to with the the peritoneum, go through that and then pick up um, rectus as well. I might trim a little bit of this out. You'll be fine. Since we could have almost closed it primarily. So what you mean is grab both muscle bellies over here? Yeah. So I would venture a guess that I've probably put in as much mesh as any other veterinarian because it's so cheap. I use it all the time. And I, I you know, I've probably put in a hundred pieces of mesh and I've probably taken out two pieces of pieces of mesh due to infection or whatever. So So I have to process it myself. The way you process it is that you soak it in 95% ethanol for about 30 minutes and then just ethylene oxide it. Um, so I don't, I honestly, we don't, don't even charge the client for it. We probably could, but probably should since I bought a lifetime supply about 15 years ago for just over what would it, it would have cost for two pieces of mesh we pass our savings on to you the customer with this Charles? Hi. Yeah, a little. So you're getting the outer la outside of that layer? Yeah, that's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Just want to make sure we're not leaving any pocket that the intestines could sneak out and herniate. And I have prepared um, both flank fold flaps in case we need them to close, but I really don't think we will. I'll just, as soon as I'm finished with this suture line, I'm going to just have a play with the skin and see how that's going to come together. We're laughing. That's great. So we'll just do a sub-Q layer first and then intradermal probably. Um, you, are you happy finishing this up? I am very happy finishing it up, but I may have to run for one of my own cases in okay. a couple of minutes. Um, do you want me to start down here then? Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. So the one key thing with polypropylene is just making sure that you don't leave any gaps um, through which the intestinal contents could herniate. There's a question, Charles. Is yep. there any benefit using two layers versus one? Of polypropylene mesh? 
Yeah, so there's, w when you're using polypropylene, there's, this stuff is so strong, um, there's no advantage to using two layers as opposed to one. It's nice to keep the edge of the polypropylene outside the abdomen. Anyway, I think I'm just going to close that fascia like that rather than going right down. So what you're doing is fine. I think we're probably doing the same thing anyway. I was grabbing the deep margin as well. Like I was grabbing body wall down here as well, but I cannot do that anymore. Um, I just don't know that. Yeah, I think that because there's no pocket there. Yep. There's no communication with the abdomen. Yeah. Um, I might trim out a little bit more. What's your next case, Huey? Uh, elbow arthroscopy. All right. Can I have another two OPS, please? I've got a um, dog with milky under at the moment. That's, we're doing a trepanation on for aspergillosis. Nice. Mm -hmm. Are you doing a soak? All right, so really nice mesh. Very happy with that. So now we'll just do sub Q. Meet in the middle. A couple of tack tacking symbols. Or yeah. Start at the bottom. Uh, we'll just start at your apex. Apex, yeah. And you can tack it down to the mesh in the middle. Just make sure that we're very superficial with our bite through the mesh so we don't reach down and grab onto intestine. Uh, so the mesh, um, it just forms uh, fibrosis, so collagen over the mesh. Um, and the mesh acts as a primary barrier to herniation of abdominal contents, but it also acts as a scaffold for um, further wound healing. You might be tugging on that yet. Yeah. Now I was trying to make my job harder. Somebody's going to slow you down. Somebody's. It's very visual from the overhead camera how much faster you're making your closure. Mm -hmm. When I was at CSU, I used to bet the students that if I could finish my suture line before they started their first knot, they had to buy me a slab of beer. And I won a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so Udo, as we're closing this, how compared to your side, how far apart should my bites be on my side of this? Given the shape of the wound. Thank you. 
Yeah, on my side? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good job. Do you know the answer to that, Mel? Yeah. <laughs> you could have said anything. Mm -hmm. The question was, when there's a curve that's bigger on one side than on the other, how do we accommodate that for the spacing of our sutures, bites? And the answer is that on the bigger curvature, you want to put your bites farther apart. I'll just tie off to yours. Wait, wait, wait. Staples, Chelsea. Uh, I think we'll do intradermal. Mel's feeling energetic. Yeah. All right, so that's great. No tension at all. Um, all right, so I'll leave that to Mel to close. You happy to close that? Yeah. All right, so, and I'll just come back over here and see if there are any questions that I've missed. Uh, so I did have to process the polypropylene myself, answer the laser question. Uh, so therapeutic laser post-surgery to accelerate healing, I am not aware of the literature as to whether it does actually accelerate healing. Um, Yui, do you know anything about post-op therapeutic laser accelerating healing and whether there's literature? Not that I know of. Yeah, so there's not a lot of literature that we know of um, to support it. Uh, I don't think it's going to do any harm. If you're using core free without creating bundles of char, it's you know, getting really char over your core free, I can see that making it. Yeah. Um, so there's a comment about using sharp dissection versus cautery, um, misleading the histopathological results, specifically the clean margin determinations. Um, I think that um, if, if we had tumor touching electric cautery char, then that could be misleading. But if I've got a margin of healthy tissue beyond the tumor before the electric cautery char, then I don't think that... Um, that it makes any difference. Um, there's a comment about using Nocita. I would love to use Nocita, but we don't have it available in Australia. A question about whether suturing the momentum into the body wall would further complicate further surgery if it happens. Look, maybe a little bit, except that we would just excise whatever momentum was in the way question about um, can any vet spend time here observing and learning? You definitely can. Just have to get in touch with me um, and I'll put you in touch with the people that you need to talk to. But you can definitely, like we have vets coming from all over the world, coming in and scrubbing in, Angela. So um, you can send me an email directly at charles at vetdojo.com. So C-H-A-R-L-E-S at vetdojo, V-E-T-D-O-J-O dot com. Um, and uh, I'm happy to put you in touch with the people that you need to. Uh, hi from Dubai. Um, so Amos, uh, go ahead and send me an email at charles at vetdojo dot com. And I will put you in touch. Um, so there's a question about, is two centimeters enough to achieve clean margins. With a grade one soft tissue sarcoma, it is, especially based on its appearance on the CT scan. Hi, Kansas City. Hi, India. Hi, California. Hi, Kerala. Hi, Argentina. Hi, Saudi Arabia. Melbourne. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oregon. Macau. Guelph, Canada. Paradise, California. Tucson, Arizona. Arizona India, Argentina. Hi from the Midwest. Nicaragua, uh, Tampico, Mexico, Connecticut, Chicago, San Diego, and Canada. Um, really great to see everybody today. Um, question about laser being contraindicated due to cancer, right? I really don't have the experience with therapeutic lasers, so I can't really comment on, um, on 
whether it's contraindicated with cancer, I should know that probably, but when I studied for my surgery boards, therapeutic laser wasn't really a thing. Um, and because it's not something that I, I use, it's not literature that I commonly um, review. Um, so anyway, well, thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Um, and I hope to see you again later on this week. Um, so another comment or question I wanted to come and observe at the clinic. So send me an email. Um, and my email address is charles at vetdojo, V-E-T-D-O-J-O dot com. Charles at vetdojo.com. Um, anyway, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you again soon.